Now, uh, good afternoon, uh, dear friends. We've reached uh, the second day of our three-day conference, international conference here in this beautiful Elizabeth Freda House with an exhibition of the 12 virtues, uh, 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 texts and paintings by Jan de Kok from the book of Herbert Witzemann. Yesterday, I opened this conference with a lecture on um, Vincentide. This morning, we heard a lecture by Reto Andrea Serpotelli on the work of Elizabeth Freire, a um, council member of the original uh, Anthroposophical Society. And now we're going to hear a lecture by Patrick Steinsma on this topic that you see here, an assessment of the status of the Anthroposophical Society by the Holy Grail, the Revelation of St. John, and the Christmas gathering of 1923. I'm very um, uh, curious to, to hear what he has to say, and I give him the word. Go ahead, Patrick. Okay. Thank you, uh, Robert John, uh, and uh, thanks uh, for uh, organizing this conference. Uh, it's quite a task, and uh, I'm really happy that you have done it, uh, to be honest. Right, so uh, yeah, let's dive into it. It's going to be uh, quite the ride, I would say, but uh, so uh, we'll see. It's divided in um, two parts. So first I'm going to uh, go into the Holy Grail, then the Revelation of St. John, Christmas Gathering, 1923. And then part B, uh, I'll describe uh, the basic problems uh, within the Anthroposophical Society, and a kickstart of an approach to solving uh, those problems. Okay, who am I? I'm a lawyer, I'm a uh, entrepreneur, got a business, I consider myself a visionary geopolitical uh, expert, uh, author and a um, earth healer. So, uh, grilled Christianity is uh, my expertise um, and the approach on Holy Grail and the Revelation of St. John. I wrote a book about the corrupt global monetary system um, and my expertise on geopolitical matter, uh, matters have uh, made me see through a lot of uh, the mischief of the global cabal. So, um, earth healing I've been doing for 25 years in mainly Europe but also in, uh, in the United States. Hundreds of projects, to be honest. Um, I've made a video with a friend of mine. It's called the uh, Gabal Exposures, Black Magic Clearings and Grill Revelations. And you can find it on our Rumble channel, uh, Grill Nights uh, 777. We also have a website of that, this uh, Grill Nights uh, 777.com. Okay, here we go. The Holy Grill. Um, anthroposophy is pretty much a grill a Christianity and that's actually a term I would like to um, use further on because it encompasses all of esoteric Christianity. And um, in order to make this presentation uh, accessible for a wide as possible audience, I want to point out some fundamentals of the esoteric uh, nature of grilled Christianity. So first we start out with defining the term of esoteric. That refers to, uh, which requires specific schooling in order for it to be learned and thoroughly understood. And those who do so are required to be able to learn and master its contents and materials, its specialized knowledge, its complex abstruseness, its skills and powers, in order for them to truly learn, understand, experience and practice it. It's a long, definition but so it can be regarded as the legal knowledge of, a, of an attorney or uh, the medical knowledge and skills of a surgeon without mastering their lingo uh, they simply would not understand what their field of expertise is and nor have any clue of what they're supposed to do and you can't master what you don't understand so it makes perfect sense that others who do not master it cannot do such work nor will be allowed to, let alone, make any comments about it. That's also very much true for anthroposophy. So, what is the esoteric side of life and what is the exoteric side of life? 
esoteric side of life has a direct connection to and is an expression of the source of life, its origins, creative thrust, its purpose, the whole idea and plan of what's going on, and the inner workings behind what becomes visible out into the open in physical densifications, shapes, and a variety of exoteric ways. So analogy would be that esoteric is like the wind, and you cannot see it, but it does express itself in an esoteric way. So it shows how nature responds, and shaped by it. The wind is always first, and nature responding to it is always second. So the esoteric side has to do with life, with content, and substance, the esoteric side with structure, form, and style. And so the inner and the outer are one. Well, life obviously consists of both, and in a harmony, ideally, of the inner and the outer, like the yin-yang shows, or the inside and outside going on forever and ever. Also, like what the book of Genesis says in the beginning, God created the heavens, inner, then the earth, outer. Exoteric. Like what St. John says in the Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was fully God. All things were created by Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. So that's inner and esoteric. Then the Word became flesh and took up residence among us. That's the esoteric side. So heaven first, then the earth, not the other way around. The same goes for the Word. First it was the Word, and after that it became flesh. flesh. So esoteric first, exoteric is second. Esoteric is primary, exoteric is secondary. Here you have a listing of uh, the two different uh, sides of that. Uh, heaven and earth, space and time, ideas, concepts, uh, male, female, yang, yang, Expansion and contraction, that's how life operates in the universe. But there's also a third aspect to these two. And through the approach of numbers one can explain that. So number one would be the indivisible unit with unity with God the Father. Two would be uh, the revelation of the spiritual world in dualities, as we just saw in the previous overview. The number three shows that the divine is holding sway behind the scenes, and it is actually the one plus two. So the three is the number through which divinity uh, reveals itself. Within grill Christianity, it's known that the two can never be the uh, number for divinity. Uh, you only see it as a duality, sees it only in its revelation. And those who claim that its duality is all there is are alas, in the wrong. The yin-yang symbol, for instance, also has this third aspect, and that is the circle. The circle is creating and keeping the other two in its balance, and while it heads towards a certain purpose. So this third aspect shows that divinity is the one in charge, directing developments to a certain goal. In ancient times, true esoteric knowledge has been in the hands of what we uh, then called mystery schools. Those schools said mankind needed such schooling because the human being, as she or he stands before us, is by no means a completed being, but is in a continuous process of developing. True esoteric knowledge provides this spiritual schooling and development so that throughout evolution man is able to reach the many higher stages God the Father has designed for mankind. All of the teaching of the mystery schools were certain centered around what was called the initiation, which is a heightening of spiritual knowledge and experience. This means to provide man with a spiritual development so man can raise him or herself to a stage of knowledge to which nature has not brought him, but which she or he must acquire for him or herself through patient learning, exercise and experience. Mystery is derived from the word mystai, which is Greek for initiate. Hence, they were schools for and of initiates. When there was talk of going into the underworld, for instance, in, in legends and mythology, it was 
actually talking about initiation. And in the old days, going the path of initiation was not for everybody. Only those who were deemed ready for it were selected to enter the mystery schools and go through the spiritual education, followed by the initiation. Especially the latter changed the person's life profoundly. After Christ's appearance on earth in a physical body, the things he did, uh, he accomplished in his death and resurrection, he also heralded a new time in which the initiation was to be opened up and made exoteric and available for all of mankind. So after Christ's life on earth and his death and resurrection, the mystery schools of old have morphed into what has been developed by a variety of streams within real Christianity who have advanced different aspects of it. The initiation remained as the core purpose of the pursued spiritual development. But Christ reinitiated the core and an overall archetype, and that is the Holy Grail. He did so during the Last Supper, when holding the grilled chalice, pouring in the wine, his blood, and dipping in the bread, his body, and by speaking the words, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. By doing so, Christ connected himself to all of mankind via the Holy Grail as the new way of spiritual development. That same physical Holy Grail chalice was used by Joseph of Arimathea, an esoteric pupil of Christ, to catch the blood of Christ that flowed from his body as he was on the cross. Later on, Joseph of Arimathea and Mary Magdalene journeyed westbound with the grilled chalice all the way to Glastonbury. Since the Holy Grail is an archetype, it also contains different aspects, perspective, layers and levels. And the Holy Grail as core image an expression of our spiritual development can be found in its three components, which are the chalice, the Holy Spirit of Christ, the wine, Holy Blood, Soul of Christ, the bread, Holy Body, and Will of Christ. Recent research and our fine-tuning uh, have resulted in the understanding that the three components of the Holy Grail, uh, the chalice, wine, and bread, each correspond with three levels of our spiritual development. It goes as follows. The chalice is connected to the clairvoyant, the wine, to the initiate, the bread, to the white magician. In anthroposophy, these are respectively also known as the spirit self, life spirit, and spirit man, or manas, buddhi, and atma. There's another vital deed of Christ that further solidified the, the Holy Grail uh, to become the new way of spiritual development since then, and that can be found in the scene mentioned in the Gospel of St. John, where Christ said to his mother and St. John, Mother, behold your son, son, behold your mother. This has to do with the following. In the BC days, there were two basic mystery schools separated from one another. Uh, due to their different natures, those who were schooled in one were not allowed to interact with the other. And only after you were initiated uh, was it allowed to uh, convene, and its leaders also did. So these two mystery schools were those of the light and of darkness. The mystery of light has to do with the tree of knowledge, is more feminine and is from the east and south. They're about the earth mysteries, Holy Spirit, Mother Earth, inner path, and has to do with what's called in the mystery schools the know yourself level. What it uh, consists of is to direct your spirit within your soul and to work on your soul to transform it in a free chalice of clairvoyance. In Hebrew this is known as the Ruach HaKadosh, which also stands for Spirit Wind. It's a matter of working on the purification of your soul and desires, uh, resulting in being a clairvoyant. And the grilled chalice can be seen in uh, priests, priestesses, uh, wisdom, spiritual cosmic science, clairvoyance, Mama Pacha, Mother Mary, Shiva, Avalon and Guinevere, for instance, which were earth mysteries in Avalon. The ones of darkness have to do with the tree of life, a more masculine, uh, northwest. They're actually the heaven mysteries of the Son and the Father. It's an outer path that's twofold. Uh, one side is the Son, is about the interaction with the other, 
as in spiritual beings and those within the cosmic spiritual world. No, the world is their decree. Uh, the Father has to do with deeds of goodness in the world. Know how to do the right thing. So it's a matter of directing your spirit and soul into the darkness of your etheric body, having to do with the Son and Christ, and the physical body having to do with the Father. So mastering one's life force body, it's a matter of the urges, and of one's physical body, it's a matter of the instinct. So this is about clairsentiency and audiency, inspiration, and has to do with the initiate, and has to do with intuition and the white magician. Grilled wine and grilled blood, feeling, heart rhythm, for instance, artists, alchemists, medicine, women and men, shamans and initiates, uh, the grilled bread and body, the will and the limbs, uh, craftsmen, like smiths, uh, knights, kings, queens, white magicians and white wizards. So, for example, that would be Saint John, Vishnu and Brahma, King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table, Merlin. But now, it's a matter of working on applying both angles of the mysteries to be able to achieve the full potential of our spiritual development designed for us. And like that, we become an autogenic spirit of freedom and love, able to do the good, which Christ already is. He's already such an independent spirit who embodies that divine plan as an example role model for all of us. And so Christ obviously is the purpose of our evolution. So after Christ's command of mother behold your son, son behold your mother, to Saint Mary and Saint John, Lazarus, while he was on the cross, they both of them, the two major representatives of those two mystery streams, uh, were actually told to fully unite and start to work together, and thereby to abandon, abandon the so far used separation of the two mystery streams. Among many other aspects, this will enable the full development of mankind, whereby we integrate in us both the spiritual feminine and masculine qualities in a new Christian androgynous state. This is also the purpose of the further development of Grail Christianity. Then the word Grail actually comes from the Latin word gradalis, which, which means gradually. So the Holy Grail also stands for a spiritual development, step by step, for each human in freedom, in their own pace, via their own path. After all, we're all free beings, and thus is it set up like this. Besides that, it's also said in the Parsifal story by Wolfram von Eschenbach that the grill is a jaspis exilis, so a jasper crystal which is mostly made of silicium, which is densified substance, sun substance, like sand. There is an additional vital aspect about it, which is that jasper lumps usually have the shape of an egg, as they are formed within the pebble the silicate stone layers of the earth. And Werner Groy pointed out in his third book that such an egg-shaped lump of chalcedony is the life body of one of our predecessors and is materialized within the silicate stone. Now surely von Eschenbach did not mean a physical stone but its etheric base, which is the silicates have the tendency to create a skin around itself. The life body, enveloped by a skin, does no longer let go of all the influences and life forces which go in and out, but it has become conscious of these influences, since the skin creates awareness of being closed off. When we bring something to awareness, we raise it into our consciousness, which is generated by our soul body. Then we close it off as an entity, for instance a thought or an image, and we put a kind of skin of consciousness around it, like a soul skin. So, when we become aware of life processes in the etheric realm, we generate a skin of soul stuff, substance that enables us to make it conscious. And this is the same as the mother beholds her son activity. The other thing is when we subsequently try to act in the life worlds, our actions form gestures of the same nature as the formative forces themselves 
that bring about the life world. And by these actions we become aware of their qualities in nature, which would be the son beholds your mother activity. So the mother quality makes things exoteric, as in the outer conscious, visible and concrete. The sun quality is a reflection of the esoteric inner realms, directly related to the life and activity of the spirit in it. This topic is actually also reflected in what uh, Steiner pointed out that happened in uh, 18, 869, when Parsifal became Grail King, as far as I have that year right. The spirit self of Christ, coming from the East, the Parsifal side, the Mother, Holy Spirit, met his own life spirit in the West that was represented by the King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, which in the story is represented by Gawain and the Son and Christ part there. So, yeah, so far these fundamental aspects of the Holy Grail. Now let's carry on with the revelation of St. John. The purpose of the Grail and the mysteries is to provide guidance to us to be able to get the next planetary phase of the New Jerusalem, also known as the Jupiter phase. This is also where the revelation of St. John comes in, since it provides that guidance in the form of an all-encompassing framework and scenario for our further spiritual development and evolution towards the New Jerusalem. That is why the revelation of St. John is such a fundamental source of Grail Christianity. And Steiner even said that it's the most profound esoteric work out there. St. John, the author, was an initiate and a singer, who has often been portrayed, portrayed with his chest, his ear on Christ's chest, where he could hear the cosmic music coming from Christ's heart. St. John was the same person, also Lazarus, as Lazarus, and he was therefore also called John Lazarus. He was also the first human being who was initiated in a new way by Christ as he resurrected him from death. And the painting here depicted uh, was made by Rembrandt. What's going on? The beauty of Revelation also lies in the actual meaning of the word apocalypse. So it's uh, misinterpreted a lot, and that's identical, uh, that it would be identical with the world's demise, and that hardly does it any right, nor is that its full message. Uh, the word apocalypse needs to be considered as, was, as what the word actually points towards, which is that the book is a document that needs to be regarded as a direct verbal revelation from the spiritual world, linked together with visions of the spiritual world. And since it's all about Christ, revelation means the revelation of the world of Christ that is being made manifest. And St. John also states that uh, numerous times, uh, he's getting these revelations after he was taken into the spirit world. So that also says it in the text itself. And it speaks of these experiences within the spiritual world. And so it is written in a language of a spiritual nature. So for example, in chapter 1, verse 10, it says, On the Lord's day I was lifted up to the world of spirit. Then it says in chapter 4, Come up here, I will show you what is to happen in the future after all that has gone before. And then it says, and at once I was raised to the realm of the Spirit. So all of St. John's descriptions and revelation of his spiritual uh, experiences are ones he has within the different realms of the spiritual world and with different spiritual beings and angels. Those descriptions are actually of a very high spiritual caliber as far as the Christian esoteric side is uh, concerned. So it should be obvious that interpreting Revelation needs to be done according to the language that knows and reflects what has actually been spoken of. And obviously interpreting Revelation with the intellect and without having a clue of its language uh, that it's written in will not unseal its riddled and vast spiritual knowledge. So this doesn't mean that the intellect is not of crucial importance, of course. The teachers in the mysteries knew it was coming and uh, it was necessary to develop and couldn't be stopped, nor was it supposed to. Actually, intellectuality brings us freedom, like in our own independent thinking and discernment and choice, 
but it also deprived us of the ancient clairvoyance, which leads us into the cosmic spirituality. Now, the connection between the mysteries and the revelation of St. John is in the fact that it makes the grand outline public of, well, of what was experienced and observed during the initiation. So, as pointed out, in the BC ways, days, the initiation was not out in the open, it was done in closed off, more secret manners. But it was not written down. So, the contents of Revelation cannot be found anywhere before St. John wrote them out. If you look back into the mysteries of ancient Greece, uh, Orphic, Lysian, Lysian mysteries, uh, mysteries of ancient Egypt, Chaldea, Persia, India, you would find the Apocalypse everywhere. It existed there, it was there, but it was not written down, but lived from one priest's generation to the next, through generations of initiators. So, where the memory was still so vivid in those times, that one could master such abundant uh, material. So, a person who was initiated in the old days, in the stage of the tomb, mystical death and resurrection uh, phase, also experienced and observed a similar outline as was portrayed in Revelation. And another reason why it wasn't written down at the time was due to the strict rule that it needed to be kept safe and secret. It was only for those who were prepared for its, its disclosure. So on St. Patmos, on Patmos, St. John was enabled and allowed by Christ to now reveal to all of mankind the entire modern version of initiation. That old version had a sequence of steps to go through. The final stages of the uh, initiation were ca carried out in tomb-like sepulchres. There your death was simulated by the priests, who used music, hypnosis and drugs to get you into that simulated death state. Then in the final stage of all the ancient BC mysteries, the student experienced the mystery of Golgotha in a similar manner. And so the tomb coffins in which the crucifixion, atonement and res resurrection were experienced were given the shape of a cross. But since the mystery of Golgotha, Christ made this fact exoteric. So now these days people uh, call these things near-death experiences uh, that are on one hand a reminiscent of these old death simulated in initiations. On the other hand, they can in fact, to some degree, consist of an actual initiation that people have these days, since those happen in people's daily life and do not only take place in the temple, where they can also happen, of course. So if someone calls it near-death experiences, it's more because they're not really aware of how humanity was set up in the ancient times. Some of these tombs and sepulchres were also within temples, such as this one pictured in a rocky cliff in uh, Kiskapan, that's in Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, decorated uh, with uh, Hellenistic carvings and uh, Zoroastrian uh, symbols. And through the ceremony, the priests were able to loosen your soul and spirit from your physical body. So you were put in that higher state of consciousness. And you could roam, explore and experience the spiritual world for three and a half days, guided by those <coughs> priests. So here you see these harps. During that initiation trip, you also met Christ and were, showing, were shown that he will come and that he is the solution for the advancement of mankind and all matters related to that pursuit. And depicted here is within that uh, temple, the burial room of it. Sometimes the initiations of the inner and the outer path were carried out simultaneously, like here on Mount Saint Odile in France. And these were actually used from all the way back in Atlantis. So this tomb here has a uh, rim, which means it can be closed off with a door or a stone. And this one does not have a rim, so it's another uh, path. There are other similar tombs in the world, because yeah, that's basically how civilization was set up. It had initiation at, it, at its core purpose. This one here, for instance, is uh, 
one in the Exterensteiner uh, near uh, Hannover in Germany and uh, I thought I'll, I'll lie in there just to test it out <laughs> and it took me about three days to get my soul uh, back so it's still kind of uh, working here are other uh, similar uh, looking tomb structures that in Tartu in Bulgaria now since uh, the language in Revelation is identical with uh, the one that was used in the initiation uh, mysteries the text of Revelation also points to those so for example and I saw and when I saw him I fell down by his feet as through death so that corresponds to what happened during the initiation since people's uh, death was simulated uh, Revelation also refers to the three and a half days of the initiation such as in chapter 11 verse 9 and from peoples and tribes and languages and nations they will see their corpses for three and a half days uh, the ones who were initiated and after three and a half days the breath of life from God went into them and they stood up on their feet and another one is and she was given the two wings of the great eagle to fly in the desert to that place of hers where she gets taken care of for a while for a time two times and a half a time away from the face of the serpent now world christianity also points out that the seven churches in revelation represent how in the current time it's our fifth group race christianity is being made manifest and the seven seals represent a future time and those seals are sealed for those who are not yet initiated it was shown to St. John but he was told to seal it it said and I heard the number of the one sealed 144,000 so the one sealed means those who were initiated and the appearance and announcements of angels also consist of the necessary signs that take place during the initiation so Revelation of St. John uh, reflects his as well as a initiation. Now Christianity was developed out of the mysteries and the wisdom of real Christianity is born in the Revelation of St. John as a mystery. However, this mystery of Revelation is one that transcends the ancient ones, one that needs to become a universal mystery for all mankind. Christ was the centerpiece of the ancient mysteries but more in a hidden and cloaked manner and it showed he would come to the earth as a man as the prophets prophesied who are doing that because they were initiates themselves because Christ did that 2000 years ago the contents of Revelation has also been updated to what since then is ahead in our future and through his appearance and disclosure of the mysteries for everybody to see and know about Christ showed to humanity that he is the secret and one that can everybody figure out. So since then the whole world has become a mystery temple and our lives have morphed into our individual, individualized path towards initiation. And aren't our daily lives full of mystery, challenges and exercises as well as rewards in case we experience we pass certain tests? So while being initiated into the world of Christ, growing into it and being inspired by it to be of help, you actually also become a co-creator with Christ of his world. And since Revelation is an outline of the plan of creation and evolution over a very vast time frame, you are then also made aware of what needs to be done. And within Revelations there are many such hints and guidelines. Well, as shown earlier, the three components of the Holy Grail reflect the three levels of our spiritual development, of our step-by-step -step initiation, the clairvoyant, initiate, and the white magician. And those three levels of our spiritual development also correspond with the three higher realms of the spiritual world into which that development leads you. And since the revelation of St. John is the handbook of our spiritual development in time, towards attaining that triad of the I am stages that threefold basic structure is also in it so the here earlier outlined overviews of the holy grail can now be expanded with that as follows 
On the left you have the grill component, then uh, the grill level that can be attained by a spiritual uh, development. At first with the ego, it's individuation, self-awareness and the intellect. That uh, takes place in the era of spiritual development uh, of the seven churches, physical earth, and that is where <coughs> man comes about in his individualized uh, state. Then the grilled chalice has to do with the clairvoyant, seven seals, and with uh, the etheric astral world, which are astral imprints in the etheric, and of the Holy Spirit. Then the grilled wine has to do with the initiate, the trumpets, the lower devashan and Christ with himself, and the grilled bread with the transformation of your physical body into the power to do good, white magician, the vials of wrath, or actually divine love, and the higher Devashan where uh, God the Father uh, is roaming. Okay, so part uh, three, the Christmas gathering of 1923. Now the Christmas gathering uh, was uh, of course of an extraordinary spiritual significance. There were about 900 people present, including uh, spiritual leaders from all over the world who were there because they all were endorsing Steiner for launching this init initiative. That meant uh, endorsing the launch of the New Mysteries with the Foundation Stone as its underlying meditation, the Anthroposophical Society to be the organizational community vehicle to advance and realize that purpose, and Goethe Science as the methodology for personal spiritual development and of spiritual research. During that gathering, Steiner presented the foundation stone that would operate as the guiding beacon for this launch. He presented the principles, 15 principles of the Anthroposophic Society to kickstart that, uh, under which it would operate. And Goethe Science was uh, the basic methodology for personal spiritual development and spiritual research. Now, Simon had also pointed out that uh, the fifth cultural epoch, which is our time from 1400 to about 3500, uh, that Goethe and science should become a global cultural factor and that uh, it can heal the ego. So that, that's quite a big deal. Since Rudolf Steiner lived in the time of all the great classic philosophers like uh, Goethe, von Humboldt, uh, Schiller, he was able to sublimate the key spiritual findings into that uh, Goethean scientific methodology. Uh, and to honor Goethe, who started it, uh, Steiner referred to it as the Goethean scientific worldview. So that methodology goes as follows. Step one, pure observation and open-minded perception of a phenomenon, just to let it speak. Then to let this perception arise as a spiritual image by connecting out of one spirit a thought or concept with it to be able to spiritually grasp it and to eventually conceive its archetype, uh, the plant and its archetype, for example. Then step three is to grasp the coming about of this archetypal image in its metamorphosis. So one then needs to remove this image in order to go beyond it and observe it in its creative process before it fully appears. So that's the process from seed to plant. Then step four is to remove this process in order to grasp the purpose of the phenomenon as an ideal. So in a plant that is the flower which is already present in the seed. You can do this uh, in a meditative manner by yourself at home. Um, so due to his premature death, Steiner was not able to complete the second and third grade of the spiritual free high school, nor fine-tune the Goethean scientific methodology that would correspond with those. He did give basic indications as to what the levels of the initiate and the white magician, the second and the third, were about since he was an initiate and a white magician himself. Think, for instance, of things like Eurythmy, the biodynamic agriculture, his advice to Mercedes-Benz to use the tourmaline for the safety of the car, that's the star that's on top of the hood, 
research results uh, on how peat fiber would work uh, against radiation, uh, the mystery place, and his vast research on karma and reincarnation, especially at the end of his life, which he said that was his actual uh, life mission. But it's also apparent that it's necessary to have a go to science that enables us to do the research on the levels of the initiate and the white magician, to do that in a safe and sound manner. Steiner did point out a variety of aspects regarding that, uh, such as that he said uh, the initiate knows how the universal laws of creation work. Uh, that means it is based on experience and working with those laws like an artist can, or an alchemist, or a smith can do. Now regarding the white magician, it's a matter that he or she knows when, why, how, where to do the right thing, to realize goodness there, which also means to change and transform evil into good. As Steiner said, it's a matter of addressing Armand and the adversaries head on. So that means that the white magician needs to have mastered the level of the clairvoyant as well as that of the initiate. So with these two paths, it's a matter of being active in life and interacting with life. So that means interaction with other people, in social interaction with spiritual beings, whereby you can also practice and develop your virtues. That also means to come into action to perform a changeover from evil into good. So key phrases here would be experience, action, practice, performance, and transform. Some other indications that Simon gave related to this are that the initiation takes place while doing the dishes. So as you're active in life with your hands and in a meditative state, you can get revelations. Steiner also said that the artistic state of being can reveal to you what's beneath the surface. He also said, our hands are the most creative instruments we as a human being have. So this means that when being active in a consciously directed artistic way, experiencing and doing your research there with your hands, you can get access to your inspirational and intuitive consciousness. So your hands know more than what you're aware of. This means you need to descend then with your spirit and soul into the darkness of your etheric body and physical body. That means in the realm which is not 100% conscious to you yet in your daily consciousness. It's the realm that has to do with your karma, with past experiences, feelings, those that have decisive impact on you, maybe traumas or good vibes from past relationships, your vices, as well as reincarnations. So the actual unique mission of your existence, your ideals, good deeds or bad ones. One month before the Christmas conference of 1923, Skyner discussed three levels as a step-by-step -step method how to find out the actual purpose of a per person. Basically it goes as follows. As you look at their physiognomy appearing in form, then you look into their coloring and characteristics of their soul. And the third phase is to find out the specific gestures, ideals and direction they have. So this means that the inner world of gestures is one that reveals the essence of people and of phenomena. The interesting thing is that gestures are a universal language. So regardless of your uh, language, race or background. These are basic gestures here, but uh, there's an uh, infinity, uh, infin infinite array of very detailed and fine-tuned gestures. Now, understanding life out of the perspective of grilled Christianity also means that what happens in the external world is the physical and soul mimicry, the gestures of a vast, complex array of inner spiritual processes. So, occurrences of external nature, such as thunder, lightning, sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and the setting of the moon, are the physiognomy and gesturing of the spiritual worlds. So, gestures are a conduit for ideals and bring about form. Now, we can bring our inner world of gestures to the surface by artistic ways of doing research. 
This also shows that Goethean science, applicable for the initiate and the white magician, requires another version of Goethean science, one that is rooted in experience, social interaction, interaction artistic activity, action in life, hands, mimicry, gestures, and moral techniques. I myself have worked with such Goethean uh, scientific methods for over two decades, working on a new uh, cosmosophy, uh, music, improvisational singing, play modeling, music theater, uh, work with nature spirits, and earth healing. And this is that Goethean scientific methodology that has to do with that um, approach. It has six basic questions. First, it's pretty similar to the other one, which is what is the sense impression doing throughout my entire being? So it's an open-minded, uh, pure uh, observation. Then you start to look for what feeling does it generate in me? And what does it do to me in my soul? Then it brings you into a certain mood and to a certain sphere. What does that uh, generate in me? So you go from your soul a step down into your etheric uh, body. So it's a descent within the chakra. A uh, chakra has an astral and an etheric component. Then the next uh, question is what does it try to make me do? So you get into the realms of astral etheric powers. Is what are they trying to make me do? But then the question is, okay, what do I actually want to achieve? What's my ideal that I want to do? So this is where you, you penetrate into your own physical body and where you find out your ideals of goodness that are in your, in your physical body, in your muscles. That's where your will is and also where you can find your purpose for your existence and having to do with your reincarnation. Then you have a last question, because those ideals of goodness are not easy to, uh, to perform and realize. So that question is, how can I overcome the hindrances that I'm faced with as I'm trying to achieve that ideal? So then again, you are in your etheric body. That's where you can develop virtues and love, the right soul attitude you need for that. Uh, transform your karma, your vices that you are confronted with, and also to transform evil into goodness. These are some examples of sculptures that I've made. So like question three would be the, 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 the sphere, the mood sphere. Uh, for me that was enthusiasm. Uh, this uh, would be my uh, way of doing in a gesture then of how I ideally would coach uh, somebody. So obviously the virtues, as also has been presented here uh, today and yesterday, are crucial in all of this since they create good habits in our etheric body. So they then actually operate as molds by which we can realize the ideals in our will. It's like they can slide in there. So when our actions are not sublimated in a virtuous manner, we are hindered in that realization because we bump into all kinds of uh, incompetences and blockades in our etheric body and soul. So it's a matter of virtues in life, in the etheric realm, and in our soul attitudes that's more an astral. So, as we have these two, each other complementing going to scientific methodologies, another indication mentioned by Steiner can be injected here, and that is the moon path and the Saturn path to the sun. Because this is what each Goethean scientific method uh, represents and does. We need them both. Because the moon path is the, crowd the Christ child in us, in our belly, that's in our navel chakra, and the Saturn path is the way into the cosmos, where the cosmic Christ is, and that part in us. So it's up to us to merge these two in us, and work on both of them, as in what's been said by Christ, Mother, behold your son, and son, behold your mother.
Steiner was also outlining this in his Karma Lectures in uh, 1924 is where he pointed out that Michael brings the cosmic intelligence uh, to all of mankind but it's Uriel who requires each individual to make it their own and personal through their daily lives so people can make mistakes there but that's where you learn from them so with the Saturn Uriel Gurdjian scientific path you can personalize your spiritual matters and qualities and your ideals and this is by the way is more of, of a reflection of the nature and way of doing of the Western Anglo-Saxons especially the Americans and that's also where Steiner said the anthroposophy of the USA would be more of a wooden nature that means more informed and that remark actually also shows that uh, Steiner alluded to that there's a difference with the European style to uh, go to the science so these indications that Steiner gave the, the here outlined second Goethean scientific methodology and the research and work that I've done with that methodology and other spiritual research in the last 25 years results in the following more expanded uh, version of the three components and three levels of the Holy Grail and the revelation of St. John these are long uh, overviews So the grilled chalice has to do with the clairvoyant, with freedom, wisdom, and the seven seals. Holy Spirit, uh, master of freedom, so you're able to choose between spirit and matter, and also clairvoyance is a uh, skill, skill from that. You're a master of true, true esoteric knowledge, and basically of spiritual cosmic science. Uh, what's been uh, spoken of in the mysteries, the know yourself that means directing your spirit within your soul to transform it into your free power of clairvoyance it's like a, a big chalice that's in your soul universal moral spiritual science imagination as a skill love for wisdom the moral fantasy, that's what Steiner uh, was pointing out is that you have a, your own creation of your thoughts but in a moral way so it's independent and free ethic individualism has to do with that freedom, independence, truth, wisdom so I use the analogy of a boat so you're kind of like standing there and from outside you can see okay that is a boat so we'll see the other analogies uh, in the other two uh, Dharma, that's also what uh, uh, is known in uh, Hindu esotericism is that that's the thing you can do and work on yourself so it's an inner path and daily life and coaching I did a coaching uh, training to find out how uh, Goethe science would maybe come about in a natural way uh, in the world and it kind of does and in coaching that uh, uh, level is uh, spoken of as uh, having to do with to learn uh, in Hindu esotericism is also something that Steiner talked about that has to do with Sankhya uh, know your mission in life, you have to know your own uh, uh, your own uh, birth chart and uh, this is the level of uh, first angelic hierarchy then level two the wine, the initiate, love, art, seven trumpets that is basically the, the level of Christ there you are a master of love fair audience, clear sentience, hearing and feeling um, what I pointed out before, the initiate masters the laws of the universe of creation and of love because love basically is uh, a creative force so and what, been, uh, what they said in the mysteries, know the world so that's a matter of directing your spirit and soul into, you, into your etheric body but also as you interact socially and with the etheric world and beings whereby you can transform your etheric body into being the power of love 
uh, art is a way how to uh, practice it and learn about it, play with it. Music is the, the all-encompassing uh, art form, I would say. So here we go with the moral interaction with the other. So that's where the social aesthetics comes in. The good conversation, virtues, love, as well as cosmic humor. So you definitely need the cosmic humor. Then uh, equivalence. It's also the beauty, it's empathy, and it's the understanding. So understanding in the sense of that you have experienced it and that you have mastered those laws of the universe of creation and of love. Because you know how they have worked. You know how they work because you've experienced it. Then we have that boat analogy. So the one, the clairvoyant, sees the boat, but the initiate is inside of the boat. And by being inside of the boat, he's figured out how it works, how to operate it, because he's experienced it and understands it. Where the grilled chalice uh, side was more uh, having to do with Dharma, work on yourself, this part has to do with karma and reincarnation in the social sphere. So as with the other, within your family, in relationships, in the professional are arena, other spiritual beings. So this is part one of the outer path, of the two paths. In the daily life and coaching, it's to experience and to play. And what's been said is practice makes perfect. So with your artistic activity, practicing that, that's how you grow, uh, make it perfect. Hindu esotericism, there's also a reference to it with Veda, which means the creative word. And it's a matter of Bodhi and Vishnu. So this is the second hierarchy of angels, archangels, which, you know, they work in groups. So that's where, for, for instance, uh, organizations and your professional um, uh, arena comes in. Then level three, the bread, the white magician. It's all about goodness, the right gestures, the seven vials. This is basically uh, God the Father realm, master of good deeds, and to do the will of God the Father. Um, you've mastered the, the levels of clairvoyant and that of the initiate, otherwise you cannot do it uh, properly. So, the, the white magician knows how to bring goodness into the world. That means he's able to direct his spirit, soul and etheric body into their physical body and the world, physical world, to transform it into the power to generate goodness. So that would be a universal moral technology that has to do with intuition. So it's all about moral acts in the world. Altruistic and humanitarian purposes. It has to do with brotherhood. The boat analogy would be that the, the, the white magician is in that boat and he gets a intuition that he has to uh, take the boat somewhere at a certain moment and time and, and he needs to do something with that. So he's all pretty much always waiting for uh, a command that tells him to do something. This is also a part of karma and reincarnation, but then of the world and of humanity. So it's humanitarian, altruistic and healing work in the world. In daily life, coaching, it's a matter of performance. And like with uh, uh, people's in, people in sports, it's a matter uh, for them to be in good shape. So they can perform at best. 
So Hindu esotericism would talk about yoga, um, being fully in sync and connected to the spiritual world that is uh, God the Father, Atma, Brahma. Uh, third hierarchy is uh, the, that of archive angels and they're all about intuition and they are able to put an intuition into form right away. <clears throat> so then these two approaches actually also deals with uh, the Platonic and Aristotelic uh, differences and also how they can work together in a complementary uh, two paths to the sun uh, manner as Steiner actually foresaw. So Platonic would be Michael, Mysteries of Light, Moon Path, Grail Chalice, Star, Goethe and Science, Mother Behold Your Son, East, South, Germanic as in European, Aristotelic would be Uriel, Mystery of Darkness, Saturn Path, Grail Wine and Bread, Style, Goethe and Science, Sun Behold Your Mother, Northwest and Anglo-Saxon. Now these basics um, laid out as a compilation overview of these ones that we uh, went through would uh, look as follows. It's a long one. So on the top we have the, the Mysteries of Light and of Darkness, Saturn Path, Aristotle on the right, Plato on the left, Grilled Chalice, Wine Blood, Red Body, the Holy Grill components, then the Revelation of St. John on the left is the Seven Seals, then Trumpets and Seven Vials of Wrath. What's mentioned in the Foundation Stone Meditation is also a, uh, in a triad. So that also has, for instance, uh, uh, practice spirit viewing, and you will truly think. In the wine blood, practice spirit contemplation, and you will truly feel. Hard long in the middle. On uh, the right here is practice spirit remembrance, and you will truly live. It's to do with the will. Then the principles of the Antioch Society, uh, as laid out by uh, uh, Herbert Bietzemann and uh, Reta discussed that, so those are uh, also in there. Then the Goethe science uh, part is what we uh, went through, clairvoyant initiate, white magician, that's the eye in your soul, the sentient soul, spirit self, manas, uranus, and toposophy and the first uh, class. And there's the other ones, so anthropophonics, as in sound, and anthropogenomics, as in form. Okay, so now uh, with this in mind, let's have a look at the, some of the issues in the Anthropic Society. Yeah, it's uh, structured as board members as constituted at the uh, Christmas gathering 1923 uh, was of course uh, well thought out uh, by Steiner and uh, it had a representation of the two uh, fundamental mysteries of mankind of light and of darkness as well as of the four basic esoteric streams of mankind so you have the east and the south here that is the eye and the ego into the soul that's represented by Waxmut, so Michael uh, Adam stream. The south is the soul's processes of death and resurrection. That's actually basically uh, represented by Steiner. It's the Abel stream. Then the west is the Raphael Cain stream uh, to do with uh, Arthurian knights, Rosicrucians represented by Ita Wegman, who was uh, a doctor to do with medicine. The Uriel Set stream, stream uh, the north, the eye and the ego in the physical body. And that's more Germanic, Viking, Knights Templar kind of thing. So that's the path outward. Well, after the Christmas gathering in 1923, uh, things started to go wrong. Gunther Waxmuth blended and thereby messed up the Balfrein and the uh, uh, 
AAG, Allgemeine Anthroposophische Gesellschaft. Then as uh, Steiner died in 25, he did not appoint a successor, uh, probably because he knew what was going to happen. When they asked him uh, on his deathbed, he said, dann wird das Karma walten, then Karma will sway. And it's been uh, uh, researched that after Steiner's death, the five remaining four sons members were each uh, attacked by Yazuras. And that resulted indeed, as Steiner foresaw, that their karmic issues would sway and would metastasize. It would disproportionately grow. So, ever since then, till 1935, it uh, resulted in ongoing conflicts. And which, uh, in which other representatives of those uh, four esoteric streams were also involved, like Dunlop, Stein and Paul Zahodis. And they can also be allocated in those four basic uh, streams. So, Mysteries of Darkness is where Dunlop and Stein are. Uh, and probably in, in the Cain stream is where Hodis is. So this uh, took until the big schism in 1935. So that was really uh, quite an, uh, an anomaly, uh, abomination actually, because what happened there is then uh, during an assembly of the Swiss and Anthroposophic Society, so not the general one, two of these basic esoteric streams and their representatives were expelled. So the Uriel Set stream and the Raphael Cain stream, they were thrown out. And then in fact expelled the, the Mysteries of Darkness the path outwards and of the Son and the Father. So this is the result. Yeah, I would say the core reason was because Albert Steffen and Marie Steiner and probably Günther Wachsmuth were uh, claiming they were, they were the ones who were authorized to determine what anthroposophy was by which they could dictate what any other society in the world or the anthroposophical working groups should uphold to. This is what outraged those who were expelled, uh, who had other points of views on this, and they stood firm for their spiritual sovereignty. Now that position, for instance, was reflected in a remark made by an older lady, and which was taken note of in the book Verwa uh, Ita Wegman, who was Ita Wegman, written by uh, Zelmans van Emmegoven. And uh, he wrote an extensive uh, relay uh, of the infight uh, within the anthroposophical society at that time. And that remark was, anthroposophy is not one ship sailing out, but thousands of ships. So there was quite a large opposition against these uh, tragic uh, decisions. Then after the schism in 1935, uh, the re-decided dogmatism uh, that has been dictating the ongoings in the anthroposophical society ever since, causing its life flow of the spirit, so of the son, Rose Crucians, father and knight Templars, to be out of the picture. And what happened uh, also was uh, infiltration by adversarial, dubious, Jesuit, Masonic, black magic types was abound such as Manfred Schmidt Brabant and other board members, including those in other societies worldwide. So more people with the genuine esoteric uh, Christian roots and who are then originally coming out of the Michael School uh, were expelled, ridiculed and sidelined uh, until today. And uh, a couple of other examples uh, within the General Anthropological Society is for instance Werner Groen, he published his research on the grill story, showing it had taken place right there in the Dornach area. Then uh, that book was labeled as being anti-grill by Christoph Lindenberg, not Manfred schmidt Barbant, I just heard, and his cohorts. So I'm saying, okay, really? <coughs> How can they shred it to pieces like that? Have they fully verified years of research on that? Is it their expertise? And wouldn't it make sense that Steiner chose the Dorna area precisely because of the fact that it was a, a grill side territory? So I would say that as long as other people within the Anthroposophical Society do not master certain topics, 
that art Article 8, manuscript of the 15 Principles, simply put, it means that uh, we don't discuss things who, with those who are not in the know, also applies within the Anthroposophical Society. Now, another example is in the 90s uh, in Holland, uh, we had the outrageous, uh, outrageous Steiner is a racist issue. Uh, it started here, it was a response to accusation that Steiner's work uh, would be racist. And the Dutch uh, board of the, the, the board of the Dutch Anthroposophical Society responded in national newspapers with this sentence. As far as there's talk of racism in Steiner's work, we distance ourselves from that. So pretty much they thereby uh, took the position that Steiner's work was racist. And as a matter of fact, uh, I had a meeting with one of the Dutch board members. Uh, and he said to me, if you read Steiner well, you must conclude it's racist. So we, totally had a, we had a totally incompetent board who demolished Steiner's legacy and mission in doing so. Then another issue that I think is mind-boggling is with the medical section in the Gertianum. They've been endorsing uh, mainstream materialistic science with uh, its position on uh, vaccinating the kids. And they also did not oppose the COVID-19 uh, kill jabs. So they didn't do anything with what Steiner said about that, uh, to name a few remarks. Here's the lecture series 177. At Constantinople 869, the spirit was made non-existent. The soul will be made non-existent with the aid of a drug. Materialistic physicians will be asked to drive the souls out of humanity in this time. Another series, uh, lecture 316, about the inoculation. He says, it becomes a kind of an harmonic satanic force. Man can no longer lift himself out of a certain materialistic feeling. He becomes constitutionally materialistic. He can no longer elevate himself to the spiritual. So the fact that the Goetheanum, uh, the medical section there, did not take a stand against the COVID-19 kill jabs, simply shows they don't have any faculty of spiritual research on that uh, topic themselves. And all these things, Pretty much fulfilled what Steiner foresaw that at the end of the 20th century, Armand will rule in the Goetheanum, and that at some point we will not be able, to, we will not be allowed in the Goetheanum anymore. So, as a compilation of what this means, since 1935, Goetheanum basically has been putting zero effort into expanding the anthroposophical society with the Goethean scientific research methodology from the angle of the uh, Arthurian Knights, Knights Templars and Rosicrucians and their Christian expertise on that. So that means a no to North and West, God the Father, Christ the Son, Seth and Cain, Gawain, Firefist, Ivanhoe, Merlin, Trevor's Head, Grilled Wine and Grilled Bread, Mysteries of Darkness, Sadamka, Uriel and Aristotle, the love and ability to transform evil into goodness and manifest goodness. Quite a biggie. Basically, the mother builds her son, son builds her mother, is put offside. No work on karma and reincarnation, no trumpets, no vials, no alchemy, earth healing, social organics. And well, Witzemann was uh, worked out of the, the board and the section. No work with nature spirits. Ways to counter black magic, economic research, artistic performances like the music theater, and real organic ar architecture. And so not just the geometrical, uh, geometrical versions of it. So, the assessment of the Anthroposophical Society since 1935 would be that it has been on the track of being anti-grill, one-sided, dried out, lifeless, instead of becoming a full-blown Holy Grill Society. All the while, Steiner said that the future human is a Rosicrucian. And all the while, that Steiner said that all esoteric impulses are guided by the last 54 Knight Templars who were burned to death. So, it's actually no surprise that ever since the schism in 1935, due to its issues of never-ending dogmatism, infiltrations, manipulations, expulsions, 
ridiculous witch hunt lashing out towards independent genuine researchers, violation by the board of 9 out of 15 principles, blockades of initiatives and motions, Robert John Keller is a big example, the boards worldwide packed with Jesuit Masonic types and their black magicians, black magic attacks on uh, many genuine anthroposophists, as well as on sacred sites that are important for real Christianity anthroposophy, and anthroposophy, that the global anthroposophical society has been a rigid, compromised, handicapped, and practically pointless in the dead end, moreover, as an exoteric society. And it's not like this is all some kind of theory. <coughs> as far as, for instance, the latter uh, remarks are concerned with uh, black magic. I've been working on, uh, as an earth healer for 25 years, so I pretty much uh, understand how the cabal operates and places their black magic impregnated objects on crucial powerpoints and ley lines. So for instance, this object here is hidden in the middle of a small forest of lined up trees in Driebergen, the Netherlands close to the Dutch and Society and it has this piece of satanic sorotic anti-grill art. So it's on a crossing point of ley lines so it goes into the energetics of the whole area. We went there and we were able to figure out that the man was sacrificed for it and his soul and spirit will, were captured in it. We perceived that he was totally off guard when they grabbed him for their ritual. So can you imagine? They made the object in the overall shape of the Baphomet. So with breasts and a penis. His arms and legs were cut off and so his body was made into an anti-grill chalice. And as you can see there is a disconnection between the pillar and the body. So it's not mother beholds your son, son beholds your mother, that can happen. But it's a Baphomet perversion of it. Another object is on the opposite of the Triodos Bank in Zeist. And uh, is in the garden of uh, the property, or part-wise property, of a former, former and uh, deceased chairman of the Dutch Anthroposophical Society, Bernard Liebgoed. It's also uh, close to uh, Dutch Anthroposophical Society buildings. And it is also on the crossing point of four ley lines. It has similar anti-grill purposes uh, as the previous object. As you can see, it has a five petal rose stem with its crown leaves, power sleeve falling downwards. And it also has a dis disconnection between the ball with the six in three light flows. Uh, and the rose stem, that disconnection is right there. So again, very literal anti-grill, because the rose has to do with five petals of the solar plexus, which is, has ten uh, uh, petals, uh, but that has to do with the mother, and the ball, three petals, navel chakra, has to do with the sun. And there's much more of such black magic near anthroposophical initiatives even near and around the Gertian. So this assessment of uh, the Anthroposophical Society means that its members of the board of the General Anthroposophical Society and those board members within the respective countries worldwide would brush this off and say this is all nonsense and say there's no such thing and everything is going just fine within the Anthroposophical Society that they are either incompetent or a blasphemous traitor, an evil Jesuit or Masonic infiltrator, or even worse, a straight out black magician. Therefore, board members who will still do so will actually only reveal themselves as being hostile to the actual mission of the Anthroposophical Society. Because this whole assessment presented here and what others have brought forth is simply irrefutable evidence that all of this is simply so. Okay, so now we head on to a little approach of how to solve this.
Yeah, as previously outlined, yeah, the Subtle Society still needs to fulfill its mission that it started out with, of being a vibrant, esoteric Christian society that represents and advances the new mysteries of mankind and is a holy grail beacon for it, as intended by, by Dr. Rudolf Steiner. So basically, it would be a vibrant, spiritual, grail powerhouse. So now what and how do we get there? Well, I would first want to point out a couple of things about the whole process, about uh, both the Goethe and scientific methodologies and the issues uh, within the anthroposophical society. Now, I would say Steiner himself already mastered the other two levels of the grilled wine and the bread, since he came up with results of spiritual uh, research on those levels. Uh, but he also admitted that some realms were not accessible to him yet, or he simply was told by the spiritual world it wasn't the time to reveal certain things. And that clearly also lay in the fact that humanity still needed to cross the, cross the threshold of the spiritual world during the 20th century. So that was in 1933, the loosening of our thinking from the physical head. In 1966, the loosening of our feeling from the physical heart. And in 2000, the loosening of our will from the physical body. Then another most crucial event of our time, uh, the, 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 the most crucial to Steiner, uh, that coincided with these events was the reappearance of Christ in the third world. That started to take place at the end of the 19th century. And that also uh, coincided with the start of the Satya Yuga, the Golden Age, in, 19, in 1899, that uh, ended the Kali Yuga, which is the Iron Age. Steiner pointed out that that launched the 2500 year period of new possibilities for spiritual development, wherein people will be able to perceive Christ in the etheric realms, as well as have uh, their karmic matters arise in their consciousness. Many I know have seen Christ there, and I have too. Then, the 20th century, and so far also in the 21st century, we uh, are confronted with uh, uh, a truckload of major attacks of the adversaries, of course. So, for instance, in uh, 1917 we have Bolshevism, 1933 we have the rise of Zorat, we have Nazism, while Christ's appearance in the Third World take, takes place. The six uh, trumpets start to sound in 1998, which is 3 times 666. Uh, in 1999, on August 11th, uh, we have a, a totally seratic sun eclipse in Europe. We have the Twin Tower uh, false flag, Act of Zora. Uh, we have, or we don't have, an incarnation of Ironman. Then we have a similar eclipse in the USA on the 21st of August in 2017. Of, uh, yeah. Then we have the, the COVID-19 uh, World Economic Forum uh, Globalist uh, Power Grab, which is a major attack uh, by Armand Azora. And is this going to lead to a new reorganized anthroposophical society in 2023? But with these things, it seems logic that the loosening of our feeling from the heart and that uh, of our will from the physical body was necessary to take place before that second Goethean scientific methodology could come about. But with that still being in the works between 1925 and 1935, and the described issues in 35, like the comic ones among the board uh, members, the other outline issues here after that, and um, um, yeah, that were clearly outlined here, it, uh, it can be said that it couldn't have been addressed properly at that time. And working out that uh, scientific methodology. Then uh, with the backdrop of all the attacks of the adversaries during the 20th and uh, 21st century, it's clear that the adversaries were able to mess things up in a big way. But nonetheless, we must conclude that any board member these days who doesn't pick up all these matters to address them is either 
incompetent or straight out evil. In both cases, I think they should vacate their seat or be removed in order for the Anthroposophical Society to be cleaned out, reorganized and reconstituted to be brought into alignment with its actual purpose again. These things happen at home, they happen in business and they happen in politics. The proper order must be implemented in the Anthroposophical Society. Steiner said that uh, St. Michael is all about restoring cosmic order and by doing so brings in healing. The same needs to be done with the Anthroposophical Society. And that might take some vials of wrath to be poured out on it to accomplish that. As pointed out earlier, Steiner said, Ironman needs to be addressed head on. To dive uh, a bit deeper in uh, addressing these issues and the reorganization of the Anthroposophical Society, let's uh, inject another uh, vital aspect regarding the development of the Holy Grail for the coming sixth root race that needs to be prepared now. Steiner said that the Russian people as such has been assigned the mission of developing the essential nature of the Grail as a religious system up to the time of the sixth post-Atlantean epoch. Now the time for the Russian people to do so is during that uh, sixth post-Atlantean cultural era that runs from uh, 3577 to 5737 and that lays the foundation for the sixth root race of the sixth post-Atlantean epoch which runs for 15,120 years from the year 7987 to 20,856. So this means that the, the Russian and Slavic peoples are destined to continue the further development of humanity and prepare the sixth root race. This potential of Russia may be reflected in the legend of the holy city of Kites, King Vladimir, Lady Fevronia, and the Brotherhood of the Grill. And that legend takes place in the Ukraine. Now Rudolf Steiner also pointed out that when there's talk of a grill castle in these legends, such as with Parsifal, Gwen, Firefish, and also Ivanhoe, it was only mentioned once in Parsifal uh, uh, story, it is actually about the New Jerusalem. And he also said that there's a spiritual force coming out of Russia into the Mediterranean as a support for Goethean science to come about and to be developed by the Europeans. And the Russians will then take this as a fruit into their sixth cultural epoch and sublimate it into their Holy Spirit, Spirit Self culture. So then in combination with the statement that the Christmas gathering uh, was the kickstart for <coughs> developing the societal framework for the sixth cultural epoch, gives an idea of, uh, of its significance. Now, to arrive at a coherent whole uh, that includes uh, required underlying ingredients within the anthroposophical society for solving its problems, it's important that we also get the full picture of what phase of our evolution we are in uh, now and what that is all about. So we can expand on the previous outline the corresponding connections of the grill, the revelation, the threefold structuring of the foundation stone, of the principles, and of the two uh, Goethean scientific methodologies with this extra dimension of our overall evolutionary plan. So um, this is a, a great uh, chart made by Louis Conrad, right? Louis yeah. Conrad. And um, it, basically I want to point out uh, the, what's called the globes, which is the one, two, till seven, old Saturn, Sun, Moon, Earth, Jupiter, the next, then Venus and Vulcan. And each of these globes is divi divided in seven rounds, seven and seven planetary form conditions, as they're uh, called. So you would have a... Uh, yeah, this is kind of a maybe simplified uh, chart of the same. But again, here you have the skills of the 
Holy Spirit and the seals, uh, the trumpets uh, initiate their feeling and the vials, divine love, intuition, and white magician. So those come back and later on. Um, yeah, this is also one that's uh, in, it's quite important actually to point out. Uh, that's in that uh, map of Willy Conrad. Uh, things that Steiner pointed out that there's actually 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 phased as well. That means that we are, uh, this whole evolution that we're on is for us to become a cherubim, spirits of harmony. So let's see where we are now. If you look at the seven globes on the left, round planetary form conditions, we're now where the red is, uh, Earth. So we're around four of the 343 phases right here. Uh, post Atlantis, <coughs> after Atlantis, and we're now in the fifth root race. Um, fifth post Atlantis with the seven cultural epochs of 20 of 2160 years each. And of the whole Earth rounds, we are now in the 25th. So uh, that means we're in uh, 172, which is here. Globe 4 of 7, round 4 of 7, planetary form condition 4 of 7. So we are now in 172. And we still have a couple of rounds to go, uh, which is, sorry, I need to go back. Yeah, this is that, sorry. So we have round five, we are in round four, so we still have three of these big rounds ahead of us, which starts at 176 and goes all the way to 196. And <clears throat> within our current round, we are going to go to 173, which is the seventh seal, 174, which is the seventh trumpet, 175, which is the seven vials of wrath. So when we go to the 176, which is of the seventh seal, then we go to that one and that one. So those, those all the time repeat themselves. They all work in cycles. So just uh, have a look at uh, where we are now. Um, Atlantis, fifth root race, that goes down into the fifth cultural epoch, Anglo-Saxon, Germanic. Here's the Slavic Persian, Russian, Slavic Persian, and then you have the American. So again, in the red, where we are now, Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, <coughs> takes place in the area of English-speaking peoples and those those with Germanic blood, which is basically all of Europe. And we are to prepare the sixth root race, at least to, you know, get it, get it kick started. But in this time is when it'll actually fully come about. So when you look at the, a compilation of everything that we kind of went through today, Grill-wise spiritual development. Uh, the basics for it, you would find here is the first one, about the Holy Spirit uh, and the sentient soul, which is the first layer to develop. That has to do with Venus and Mars. And what is uh, leading it, behind it, to get to the Holy Spirit and clairvoyance is Uranus. Then, and, and this has to do with clairvoyance. So then the other one is, uh, I call it intelligent soul. I don't like intellectual mind soul. I don't like that. I call it intelligent soul. Um, the basic planets for those are Jupiter and Mercury. And that's where um, uh, also the, the faculty of the initiate um, can come about. Uh, the grill wine trumpets and that is guided by Neptune and when we're talking Holy Trinity uh, then you have the one that we're currently in the 
consciousness soul. Base is um, the moon and Saturn. So we're talking about the moon path and the Saturn path. Uh, that would lay, or that would generate the consciousness soul. And that is uh, uh, the, the white magician that can come about on that end. And it's Pluto and the God the Father quality that is uh, leading that uh, ascending evolution of that. And the heart is, of course, the sun, which is directing all of this development. So, I do want to point out uh, one thing again about those two uh, Goethean scientific methodologies and the, cultural, the fifth cultural epoch is that it's a, it's a joint venture of the Anglo-Saxon and Germanic uh, peoples uh, for the development of the consciousness soul. So for that epoch to be successful, both methodologies should uh, be applied since they each reflect uh, one aspect of the development of the consciousness soul. So the consciousness soul means uh, that you're aware of being a spirit with a soul and a body. That means individuation. That means knowing what your unique mission is in life and what your karma is and what your spiritual fellow men and, and women are and what you want to develop. So this basically means that all the three levels of the Holy Grail need to be fully worked on to be able to continue to the next cycle of the six root race and the seven seals. And then the Russian Slavic uh, peoples will take it from there. So. That uh, um, organogram that I just showed, uh, you can also use that for um, looking at the initial board of uh, the Antipsol Society. So I would say Rudolf Steiner belongs in the Saturn uh, section, as he was the one with the mission, with uh, establishing Antiposophy. Uh, his actual work on karma and reincarnation that he said that was his actual mission. Elisabeth Vrede in the Jupiter part for uh, the cosmic uh, um, Christian uh, science, cosmosophy, astronomy, that's what she was busy with. Albert Steffen was the second chairman, so the Mars section is also a management section. And uh, it's also uh, an art section, which has to do with speech, and he was a poet. So, um, in the Venus section I placed uh, Marie Steiner um, as a general board member. Then Ita Wegman in the Mercury uh, section, since she was a uh, uh, doctor and worked on uh, the clinic and was developing uh, medicine with Steiner. Then in the moon section, I would place uh, Günther Wachsmuth as he was the treasurer. So moon has to do with money. And moon also has to do with the building. So that's where he was actually, you know, busy with the Balfein uh, and uh, messing up there. And Günther Wachsmuth also wrote books about uh, the earth, about uh, Gaia. So this is what happened then after that uh, 1925 and then eventually 1935 is that uh, yeah those people were gone and then you would have only this left. So yeah you can never have a full holy grail reflecting new mystery reflecting uh, uh, society if that is not restored. So, obviously Steiner chose uh, the initial board members to reflect the Holy Grail of spiritual development. Uh, this approach also shows what was outlined before with the four streams. Uh, but since Steiner's death and the expulsion of the members belonging to the Northwest streams, which are more of an esoteric nature, Christ and God the Father uh, element, is when the Anthroposophical Society lost its connection to its prime mission and source. And so the conclusion is that the Anthroposophical Society has become an empty, dried-out grill, more of an ex exoteric, merely chalice nature, as shown by all the dogmatism and the described issues that have been going on. 
and thereby lost being the embodiment of uh, the new mysteries. So yeah, this is a basic outline and the seven planet template will be expanded on to uh, provide my suggestion of a way to resurrect, reorganize and recalibrate the anthroposophical society. And since that is quite a lengthy, uh, lengthy outline, that will be done in episode two. And when and where will be announced. So, thank you all for watching. Wow. That's it. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, it's 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 a it's almost it's a wrap. dinner time, but it would be uh, actually uh, too bad to 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 forego any questions at this moment. Do you, do you agree that maybe we we spend a little time and ask him questions or what? Uh, Close the smartphone. You want to stop the film by now? Yeah. Okay.